Hey guys, and welcome to The Bar. My name is Gabe Bauer, and I love to make cocktails inspired by history. And when I'm making those cocktails, I come through a lot of different ingredients. I have a very large liquor cabinet, so what I wanted to do was kind of start tasting these individually and compare some to others to kind of give you guys a hint of what some of these especially weirder alcohols are like. Uh, today, I have three different types of Slivovitz in my liquor cabinet. We have Bistra, Maras Maraska, and uh, Zvak. And they come from three different countries. Uh, they're all Slivovitz, and the Slivovitz is a plum brandy that's very popular both in the Balkans and in Central Europe. And here in Tampa, these are the three that I can actually access. So I'm gonna taste all three of them, kind of give you guys a little, bit of a, a little bit of an idea of what the differences are between these three. And then that way, if you guys ever come across these in the store and you think you may wanna try it, you'll have some pretty good information on what each of these are like. So the first one I wanna get into is the Bistra Slivovitz. It's a very hard word to pronounce. Um, this is a Serbian plum brandy. So uh, obviously hails from the Balkans. It's got a slight coloration, so it may have been aged in uh, a French oak barrel um, for a short period of time. This is sweeter than the other two that we have here but it's also far higher in alcohol content at 50%, whereas the Maraska is gonna be around 40 and so is the Zvok. So uh, there's a differentiating factor in terms of the potency of the alcohol between these three, even so all of them are gonna pack a punch. As far as mixing this particular alcohol, it does pretty well in cocktails because it's sweeter, um, but even so with these three, uh, it can be very, potent and uh, a little bit overwhelming in certain cocktails. So you want to use them in moderation. For the Bistra, I actually used it in one of my cocktails called The Shot That Burned the World, which was all about the shot by Gavrilo Princip, which started World War I. Um, and it's actually one of my favorite shots, but I poured it out here into our shooter. And immediately you smell the, the plums, very fruity a little potent in terms of the alcohol. It's kind of tinging the, uh, the, the hairs in my nose. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna give this a taste. Mm. <laughs> it is 50% alcohol, so you, you almost need to cough a little bit, but very tasty, very fruity. I think this is uh, one of the most palatable, high proof um, plum brandies that you're going to come across among all the Slivovitzes. I've tried all of these before, but uh, the Bistro is actually my favorite, I think. But then again, there is Maraska, and Maraska is a little bit more common uh, among at least the friends that I know and the people who drink Slivovitz. This is usually the one they go to. This one hails from Croatia, um, is around 40% alcohol. Obviously, there's a differentiation in the color between these two. This one is lighter. So, um, and also this one's a little bit more savory uh, in terms of smell and on the tongue. Yeah, immediately they, upon smelling this, there's less fruitiness, um, which may make it a better mixer in certain circumstances if you want other fruits to take a, a, a greater uh, uh, position in the profile of your cocktail. But we're gonna give this a try as well. Um, now, mind you, this may not be as good of a shooter or a shot uh, as the Bistro is. I actually think that this is great if you're at a party, especially with your with your Bosnian or Serbian friends, more Serbian friends, uh, and you wanted to have um, shots, I would probably go with the Bistro at least off the front because it's so much fruitier, a little bit more palatable. But like I said, this one's way more savory and doesn't tinge the hairs nearly as much as that one, but we are missing 10% in alcohol. Mm. Surprisingly smooth, but this one kind of has almost a, a woodier taste, which I find interesting considering that this one has a darker color, which suggests that maybe it was aged longer, but this one far more savory. I think this is gonna be a great addition to most cocktails if you were going to be adding it to a cocktail because it's very smooth. This one doesn't burn nearly as much as this one. Um, the plum fr flavor is there, but it's way more subtle, um, but still delicious. Mm. All right, and the last one that we have 
is Zvok Slavovitz. And if you guys have watched some of my videos in the past, you know that I have a very difficult relationship with this particular uh, liquor. Um, it's a Hungarian plum brandy, so these are all from three different countries, and it's uh, a kosher uh, plum brandy. The Maraska Slivovitz is also kosher, so um, you know if you're Jewish, you're able to to drink it and enjoy it. Uh, the Bistra Slivovitz is not, or at least it doesn't claim it is. So I'm going to assume it's not. But this one has by far the most medicinal smell. It almost I don't know what is the the combination of ingredients that makes this one so vastly different from the other two because there's a certain bitterness to it that's not always the most good to taste uh, right off the bat this is uh, about as clear as the Maraska so in terms of clarity of the alcohols this one uh, these two are about the same smell wise it's by far the most memorable smell it's not necessarily fruity, but it's also not necessarily savory. You know, it's kind of bordering on the lime in between. Uh, very interesting profile for this. All right, we're gonna give it a try. And this one's not bad actually either. I've added this to, oh, no, there's the aftertaste. Never mind. <laughs> So the thing that I don't like about the this particular Slivovitz is that it has a bitter aftertaste. And with fruit that then turns bitter, it doesn't always mix well. Um, and in this case, this Zvok Slivovitz just, it, it, it bothers me. I don't know what it is. That hasn't stopped me from putting it into a cocktail though, because I have, and uh, that was actually the Vampire Queen, which was based off of uh, Elizabeth Bathory, who was the supposed blood countess who had killed hundreds of, uh, uh, I believe her maidens, um, children, essentially girls, uh, adolescents, and then supposedly bathed in their blood. There's a lot of stories about Elizabeth Bathory. She's a very interesting character. But I use this with uh, some cherry and vodka, um, kind of to tone it down. But let me tell you, the one thing that I will say that is common among all three of these is that the flavor is unique and it can be overpowering. So if you're going to use it in your cocktails, make sure that it's in moderation. Play around with it. See which flavors are gonna work better. Considering that these are plums, I would say darker fruits. If you had like a dark rum, this would actually probably go well with it. I wouldn't necessarily use the Zvok in that sense, only because it could take the already subtle bitter nature of let's say a dark rum that's been aged for a while let's say i have a 30 year abuelo uh, that uh, is really delicious bold dark fruit flavors but this would just amp up the bitterness and kind of ruin the taste if you're going to use that so in these cases like i said very delicious very interesting not bad to shoot on their own my favorite is easily the serbian plum brandy but the Maraska is very good. The Zvok has its place. Certainly one I think you guys should try, but those are the Slivovitzes that I have. If there are any that you guys think I should try in the future, I know that there's a Czech one and a Polish one that I haven't tried. Uh, let me know, tell me in the comments, but I hope you guys enjoyed. And as with all things, history is better with a drink. Cheers.